love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, and we've all heard the line, read at hundreds of weddings. It's not a wedding verse, although I don't have a problem with the person using it at a wedding because it does tell us about the nature of love. But the real reason that Paul gives us this description of love is because he's talking about how we serve each other in the body of Christ with our gifts. And Pastor Tim Holscher, and we're looking at the ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of believers today. And specifically, we're looking at his giving us gifts, abilities to serve others. And he's just got done talking about the fact that we don't all have the same gift. We have different gifts. We've seen in the last couple of days that all the gifts are important, even those that we seem are less important. In reality, you really notice them when they don't work. And that brings Paul to make this statement here, beginning in 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 1, if I speak with the tongues of men and angels. Now, I believe when he uses this men and angels, they were speaking in the tongue of men because that was the whole purpose of the gift of tongues was to communicate something to other people and to let them know that this was supernatural from God so that these people could um, then share truth with them, evangelize them. But he says, if the, so the angels is written there as a hyperbole. It takes the, the thing they were doing and then says, or even if, it, even if I could do it in angels. He says, but I don't have love. I'm not doing it out of love. Because some of these people probably in this church were speaking in tongues because look at this. They're speaking in a language from around the world. They're speaking in the tongue of somebody that was from Spain or what we know as the Britons or those places or France and those people that traveled over to these different parts of the world and they could communicate to them in their tongue without having gone through some sort of formal training that allowed them to, to know those languages. And so Paul says, boy, that's really showy. But if you're doing it because you think it's cool, but you don't have love, you're just making a lot of noise. You're a clanging cymbal, which is nice for just a little bit. I mean, a gong, if you play a gong once at the right time or cling a, a, smash some cymbals together at the right time in a piece, fine. But if you've got the orchestra playing and someone's just banging on cymbals in the background or just banging away on a gong like that, pretty soon it overpowers everything else and it just becomes obnoxious. He goes on, he says in verse 2, And if I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge. Now, knowledge is a gift and prophecy is a, is a gift. And we've seen previously that prophecy, one of the things it did was is it revealed mysteries. And so I think we have two spiritual gifts here, the gift of prophecy and the gift of knowledge. And he says, you know, if I have both of these and I know all knowledge and I can give this knowledge, hey, I've got, I've got knowledge for you. And again, I'm thinking about this as a person that teaches the word of God. If I'm just there to show off how much I know and I am not ministering that, I'm not using that gift in love because I really care about these people, but I'm trying to impress them. Well, we're going to see in a minute what Paul says. He says, and even if I have all faith, faith is a gift. Faith is a gift for the benefit of the church to see promises so that the church doesn't get waylaid. But faith, even so, is to remove mountains. Now, again, I think he's probably speaking in hyperbole. He's not talking about literally telling a mountain to move into the sea. We know Jesus says that earlier, and I don't doubt that that's something that potentially could have happened. But I think here, maybe Paul pivoting off of what Jesus had said, if he, if he knew about that at, at the time he's writing this, um, Paul probably is speaking really more in the hyperbole, pivoting off of that. So I'd have faith even to move mountains. And I don't think he's taking mountains allegorically. He's just, I think he's speaking in hyperbole, just like up here. It's even in the tongue of angels, something they don't do. And the gift of faith isn't here to physically move mountains out of the way of the church. But I do not have love. I am, notice what he says here. I am, get this, I am nothing. I'm a nobody. You think you're somebody because you know all this truth and you share all this truth and you can do this. Look at what I can do for the church. I can, I can move mountains. But see, that's about you. 
rather than serving for the benefit of others. And he says, if you do it without love, I'm nothing. He says, verse 3, we have the gift of giving. If I give away all my possessions to, and if I surrender, even give over, so go even so far as to give my over my body, so that I, uh, in this word, so that I may, um, so that I may a glory or boast, but I do not have love, then it profits me nothing. It does me no good. There's no profit in that. So here we have a person uh, that has a gift of giving, and they even go so far as not just to give away their possessions, which a person might have done that, but then to actually surrender or hand over their body, maybe to the flames, maybe to something else, and it's all for the, for the sake of a boast. He says, that's not, that's not love. If you're doing it just to show off. So this is the hyperbole in this statement here. And here again is love. It doesn't Without it, I, there's no profit. There's no benefit. So then he says in verse 4, For when you think about when you're exercising your gift, love is patient. It doesn't get impatient with other people. It's patient with people. Love is also kind. It doesn't get in their face and make them uncomfortable. Now, some people will be uncomfortable because of what we say, but if our personality is making them uncomfortable, that's a different matter. It is not jealous, or this the Greek word zealous over here. It's not driven to succeed. It's not driven to win at any point. As a pastor, I've had to learn that this is not what the Holy Spirit wants me to do. The Holy Spirit wants me to exercise kindness and love and not to be one that is driven by zeal. I don't have to win. If somebody wants to disagree with me, let them disagree with me at a point. But I'm not there to win. Then love does not brag. It doesn't become puffed up. And it is not also arrogant. Puffed up even more so. In other words, if this is all about you impressing other people with what you can do, then what's that? Because love doesn't do That's not love. So he told them doing these things without love means you're just a noisemaker, means you're nobody, and it means that you profit nothing. So now what is love? Well, it's these things. And if you are being about bragging and being arrogant, hmm, or it does not act in a disgraceful manner. In other words, it doesn't do something that is ridiculous when you look at it. It's like, what in the world? What is that show? What is that display? That's not appropriate. It does not seek its own. It's really easy when we're spirit when we're exercising our spiritual gift. And I and I, I'm very conscious of this, thinking of this as a pastor, that if I start exercising my gift because I'm trying to promote myself or do something that's to my benefit, that's not love because love doesn't do that. And it's not provoked. It is not incited to anger. Sometimes when you're using your spiritual gift, it's not always appreciated by the other people that you're, that you're dealing with. And as a result, you can become very frustrated and hostile and angry and provoked to anger when you're trying to serve. It does not keep an account of the wrong that's suffered. It's real easy for a pastor when something doesn't go wrong to say, you are always doing this. You people are always stubborn. And why don't you do this? But that could be true with other people. Do you know how many times I've served you and I've never gotten a thanks? If you're doing, if you're serving because you don't, haven't gotten thanks, you're not serving for the right reason. That's not love. It doesn't rejoice in unrighteousness. So when you see people, the things that they're going through, things that happen, you never at any time go, well, we got it done. It may not have been the right way, but it got done. Or you see people suffering for these things and go, yeah, see, they finally got it. But rather it rejoices in truth or in the truth. It wants people to depend on God in accomplishing God's purpose, not, not accomplishing God's purpose by any means. There's a right way to accomplish God's purpose and there is a wrong way. It actually bears all things. Uh, here it keeps every confidence. Literally, it bears everything is what it does. In other words, the stuff that goes on in churches, there's, there's weights that you're going to have to hold up in the midst of this. And it believes all things. It gives people, I would just say, it gives people the benefit of the doubt. It doesn't sit and it's not suspicious. And it hopes for all things. It, I, I look at believers and things that are going on and I have hope that they're going to be what God wants them to be. Because I know God says he's going to finish that work in them. And it endures. It is patient under all things. 
can guarantee you when you're going to exercise your spiritual gift, you're going to have to endure some things that you're going to see with other people and it's going to be hard. But all of these things are characteristic of love. So you go back to the first part of this and he says, if you do this, it doesn't have love, you're nothing. If you do this and you don't have love, you're, you're noisy, first of all. And then, then you're nothing and then it profits you nothing. And so let's take a look at love. And he says, this is what love is. And this is what love isn't. And think about that. Is that your attitude when you're using your spiritual gift, when you're ministering to others? Every gift is important. But it's not about you. It is about serving others in love. It's about doing what is best for them in love. Not just rolling roughshod over them doing what's best, but doing what's best for them in love. That's what this is about. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have a gift. Serve that gift, but serve it in love. Because if you don't, you're just a noisemaker. You're nothing. And it amounts to nothing. And I've been there. I've done that. We all have. But we can actually be those that remember that we can be spiritual. We can set our minds to who we are in Christ. And we can enjoy, this is Galatians 5.22, the fruit from the Spirit. Now, we haven't got around to talking about this yet, but we will eventually. That the Spirit is going to produce a fruit in us. And that first quality or characteristic is love really wanting what's best for these other people. And it's a spirit-produced love. It's not a love that I generate within myself. It's a, it's a love that the spirit produces in us. Because we want to serve others in love to encourage them to focus on who they are in Christ, to help them get back their mind back to who they are in Christ if they need to do that, so that they indeed can have a good day in the Lord. Thank you for joining me today.